Hi, a blessed day to all of you. I hope that all of you are safe and doing well. I always pray that may God's light shine upon you to protect you, to guide you, and help you, especially in your studies. Um, the semester is almost over. You have few more weeks left so you need to double your time you need to do and give your best so that you will be able to recover especially those who fail in the midterm exam so kailan mag-aral tayo ha you need to move on to the second semester so sikapin natin makabawi but before the semester ends we have three more topics to discuss um such as non-nursing theories, health as multifactorial phenomenon, and the third one is the interlinking relations of factors affecting health. So let us begin with the non-nursing theories. So we have three non-nursing theories. The first one is the systems theory change theory and the developmental theory let us discuss each of this theory so the first one the system theory what does um, it talks about okay system theory um, actually provides another approach for studying individuals in their environments and is used by many disciplines okay ginagamit din yan okay so we have what we call the general system theory that includes or the study about purposes content and process so it breaks down the whole and analyzing the parts okay the relationship between the parts of the whole are examined to learn how they work together so, ini isa isa natin for the general system theory. So, bawat system may kanya kanyang parts yan. So, just like the human body, di ba? Pag sinabi natin yung um, circulatory system or respiratory system. So, the respiratory system, you have the lungs and your lungs consist of the lobe. So, marami parts. So, each system may parts and each parts, they have to do its work para mag-impact siya doon sa buong system. So, merong function ang bawat parts. So, yan ang ibig sabihin natin here. And how does these parts are related with each other para mabuo yung isang system? Para magkaroon ng magandang function ng isang system? So, um, it works in unity. So, parang ganun siya. And the system theory was developed or the general systems theory was developed by uh, von Vertalanffy in 1969 and 1976. This theory assumes the following, okay? According to Vertalanffy, all systems must be goal-directed. So, bawat system, meron dapat goal, may target dapat, okay? A system is more than the sum of its parts. So, as I mentioned in the previous slides, yun nga ang sabi ko that each part meron kang um, meron siyang function para uh, doon sa buong system. Meron siyang big impact doon sa whole system. Just like, an indi just like hindi lang system that the human body were referring here. So, pwede rin systems um, um, dito sa work Okay, like for example, yung nurses. So, bawat individual, um, as a nurse, yung patient, so bawat individual, merong contribution. Bawat individual or bawat member of the team, meron siyang kanya-kanyang contribution. Importante contribution that might impact the whole team. Okay, so, ganun yun. Um, parang katulad lang din sa group works ninyo, sa inyong group work na binigay ko. So, each of you, have to do your part. Okay? Kasi, pag hindi mo magawa yung isang part mo, yung impact dun sa, sa buong group, yung output nyo as a group, hindi siya ganun ka-effective, hindi siya ganun ka-ganda. So, each 
or indivi each individual should do their part or give their best, okay? So, according to Bertha Lanfey, um, a system is ever-changing and any change in one part affects the whole. So, changes is part naman talaga, di ba? Continuous ang changes. So, lahat, lahat ng system may mga changes yan. Even our human body or even the school system or system at work. So, hindi yan naka-fix. Pwede magkaroon ng changes. And, any changes that you introduce might affect the whole or the whole system, the team or your group. Diba? Pag may changes na ginawa ng isang member ng group ninyo, it impacts the, the output of the whole group. Okay? So, boundaries are implicit and human systems are open so and dynamic when you see dynamic so human systems it is open even your human body so uh, it is dynamic so you are adjusting with the changes may changes pwede pumasok and changes yan even with your human body naga adjust ka to your environment okay possible na merong changes sa environment mo okay it could be physical psychological and so on okay another theory here is the change theory so according to change theory people grow and change throughout their lives diba talaga naman everybody grow wala naman siguro na iiwan lang sa pagiging unless kahit una ano yan eh meron pa rin yung changes that happens diba so, this growth and change are evident in the dynamic nature of basic human needs and how they are met. So, like for example, um, as infant, ano lang ba ang need ng infant? Kailangan niya ng milk, mag-start lang siya sa milk formula. As lumalaki siya, pagdating ng 6 months, oh, milk formula or breast milk lang siya dapat for, from um, 1 month or day 1 to 6 months. Okay na siya, nakaka-survive na siya with the breast milk, even without water. But then, as the child grow, pagdating niya ng 6 months above, um, the, the breast milk is no longer enough. So, we, we need to keep a complementary feeding or supplements. Okay, magdadagdag na tayo, mag introduce na tayo ng mga other foods na pagkukuha na ng nutrients ng isang bata. So, ganun din. Um, ang change talaga, it really happens to us, even in our body. So, because we are growing, every day may nangyayari, may changes. Yun nga, it happens daily. And change involves a modification or, or alteration. When you say modification, <clears throat> like for example, i-modify mo, babaguhin mo yung diet ng isang, um, halimbawa, diabetic client. Okay, diabetic client. Kung ano yung usual diet niya, ina-diagnose na may diabetes siya. So, dapat less na yung kanyang sugar. Bawas na yung kanyang carbohydrates. Or, pwede mong no sugar at all, kaya alteration. Okay? It may be planned or unplanned. So, pwede nakaplano yung changes. Ano ba yung mga nakaplanong changes? So, ipaplan natin yung diet ni diabetic client. Okay? So, dapat ganito na yung diet niya. Ano naman ang mga example ng unplanned changes? Ito yung what usually happens to our life. ba? For example, merong nagkaroon ng sickness. Even just like the pandemic that happens that happens to us now. ba? That is not planned. So, nagkaroon ng changes. Ano ba ang changes? Nagkaroon ng changes sa ating life. ba? Ang daming changes. Even in your in the mode of learning, um, in the way we socialize with people. So, lahat ang damn changes. Oh, those are end plan changes. Although a, vir a variety of change theories exist. Okay? So, the change theory was developed or Kurt Le Levin in 1962 should develop the classic theory of change which identifies the following or the six components such as recognition of the area where change is needed so you have to recognize you have to you have to check ano ba tong area na to ano ba ang area 
uh, nakikilangang i-change. Even for example, sa iyo, sa iyo, sa iyo na lang as a student. So, ano bang kailangang baguhin mo? Eh, bumagsak ka. Bumagsak ka sa some of your subjects. So, anong area? Anong subject ang need mo? Ang air? Uh, ano ang witness mo that you need to change? Okay? Analysis of the situation to determine what forces exist to maintain the situation and what forces are working to change it. Ano bang kailangan? Ano yung forces? Ano yung pwede mong gawin para um, mabago mo yung situation? Kasi yung situation, limbawa, bumagsak ka. So, kailangan mong baguin. So, you have to double your effort para maka, makapasa ka. Or kung mataas naman talaga yung mga grades mo, maganda na talaga, ano yung factors na kailangan mong gawin to maintain the situation? Then, identification of methods by which change can occur. Ano ba yung method na gagawin mo? What shall you do? Paano ka mag-aral? Ano ba ang technique mo dapat para makapag-aral kang mabuti at maipasa mo? You need to manage your time. Sabi mo, ang dami mong requirements sa school. Um, hindi mo ma uh, magawa lahat. Kulang ka sa oras. Maybe you need to... Uh, um, review or you need to do or work on your time management okay Rec recognition of the influence of groups mores or customs on, on change okay ang aking example is very simple as a student sino ba yung makakapag influence sa'yo na makakatulong sa'yo na magbago mo magbago mo yung study habit mo maybe uh, you can you can have your friends um, your friends can help you um, or your professors can help you on how to change your habits. Kailangan mo i-change yung habits mo. Kailangan mo maipasa. O kung ang individual naman ito ay mag may sakit naman ang pinag-uusapan natin. So, ano ano yung group na mag influence sa kanya? Okay? Like, for example, yung sa diabetic or cancers. Di ba meron silang mga association, merong groups that they help each other. Okay? Para makapag-influence ng changes towards um, healthy living. Okay? The next is identification of the methods that, ref that the reference groups uses to bring about the change. So, Mas maganda talaga pag may mayroong group. Ito ngayon sinasabi ko sa inyo when it comes to study. Before, yung example ko sa inyo, we have this group of friends. Now, of course, we have the same goal towards a passing nursing and or finishing nursing. So, that was our goal. So, we work together. We work together. Ano ba yung method natin? Ibigay ko na sa inyo yung example before, tulad ng ginawa namin. We have to motiv motivate each other. So, ang motivation namin is, the fi five of us, we agree that during long examination, um, pataasan kami ng grade. Kung sino yung lowest, siya yung malilibre ng ice cream. So, that was our method for us na mag-aral talaga kami. And another way is we do group study wherein we can share ideas. Kasi there are terms or there are certain terms in nursing, lalo na when you study pathophysiology, it's very difficult to understand the, um, um, the function of the human body, bakit, bakit nagkaroon ng certain diseases, ano ba ang factors. It's kinda difficult to understand. So, we need help from each other. Kasi, diba sabi nga nila, two heads are better than one. Or how much more kung five kami? There are five brains working together. Okay, then, of course, we can share ideas for us to understand. And for us to be able to really understand the concept. So, that was our method. Okay? And the actual process of change. Ito na yung gagawin na natin. Ito na yung kung kanina, we just identify, we plan. This time, you have to put it into the actual. So, itong change really, um, applicable siya in any situation. You can apply it in the patient, especially in changing the um, health habits of the patient or even in your life yeah. as a student. Okay? The way you study. So, change theory of currently win is very applicable. Okay? So, this is very applicable, no? Not only in your life, or in, in nursing practice, most important, di ba? Um, in helping your patient, especially in their um, health 
uh, recovery or in, in the recovery process, de ba? Para mapabilis ang kanilang recovery. So you can you can apply the six components, de ba? You by recognizing what are the problems, okay? You analyze the situation. What are the methods? You identify methods to help the client change the behavior, especially if meron siyang <coughs> um. Um, habits na smoker, drinker, or alcoholic drinker. So, you have to identify the methods kasi those factors can contribute to illness like um, heart disease, um, hypertension, diabetic, etc. <clears throat> so, these steps are very applicable in our nursing practice. So, the, the change theory of Lewin identified three states of change. The first one is end freezing. So during this phase, um, there is a recognition of the need for change. So you have to recognize, is there a problem? Meron bang problema? May illness, may diagnosis of illness, okay? And the dissolution of previously held patterns of behavior. So ito kasi yung usual. Um, dito, na-recognize natin na kailangan baguhin yung kailangan magkaroon ng changes doon sa diet ni patient. Kasi mataas ang kanyang blood sugar, mataas ang kanyang blood pressure. So, we recognize that there is a need for change. Ano ba yung behavior niya? Before, um, ano ba yung diet niya? Ano yung usual na kinakain niya? Ano yung habits niya? Okay? Then, the second one is movement. So, in this phase, uh, it is the shift of behavior toward a new and more healthful, healthful pattern. So, movement marks the initiation of change. So, here, kung ano yung previous niyang ginagawa, kung madala siyang kumakain ng uh, cakes, ice cream, or matatabang pagkain. So, here, the movement, nag-start na siya. Nag-start na siyang magbawas. Hindi na kumakain ng matatamis. Or, nag-stop na siyang, nag-start na siyang mag-stop ng paninigarilyo or pag-iinom ng ala. Okay? And then, um, ito na yung start ng, ito yung start ng kanyang behavior, start ng kanyang pagbabago. Pero, um, yung, yung changes kasi, hindi naman yan isang click lang, di ba? So, hindi siya mangyayari at once. So, it's long. So, dito tayo sa third steps, refreezing. So, it is the long-term solidification of the new pattern of behavior. So, ito na yung long-term para talaga ma-implement yung changes. Okay? So, dito lang, just another um, diagram kung ano yung um, stages according to Kurt Lewin's model of change. So, dito nga sa end freeze, you have to ensure that the, an example nito is for the employee, you know, ensure that the employee are ready for change. So, you have to know na ready ba talaga ang employee for change? Or pwede rin, ready ba ang patient mo for change? Or ikaw, ready ka ba for change para uh, maipasa mo yung subjects mo? The same. Okay? And then, in the change, execute the intended change. So, dito ka na mag-start. Okay, refreeze. Ensure that the change becomes permanent. So, dapat, itong changes na to na ginawa mo, dapat maging permanent na yan. Ma'am, sabi mo kanina, walang permanente. Pero at least ito, may apply mo na kasi this are the right thing. Halimbawa, uh, hypertensive si patient. So, kailangan talagang hindi na siya mag-stop na siya ng smoking. Mag-stop na siya ng um, alcoholic uh, drinking of alcoholic beverages or whatever. So, dapat dito, permanent na yon Hindi yung nag-stop lang siya for um, one year, tas after ng one year, ayun, balik na naman. Okay. So, another example. Okay. So, unfreezing. Sabi dito, recognizing the need for change na mention na natin kanina. Encouraging the replacement of old behaviors and attitudes with new behaviors. So, in encourage natin. So, another one, changing. So, you implement change by taking specific actions. Okay. Helping employees to learn new concept or points of view or role models, mentors, experts, benchmarking, results, and training are useful mechanisms to facilitate change. And in the refreezing, changes are reinforced and stabilized. 
So, leaders should integrate the change behavior or attitude into the normal way of doing things. And coaching and modeling help reinforce stability of change. So, another example lang yan for you to better understand changes. So, the third one. Okay, di ba meron tayong three na nursing theories? Okay, yung kanina, system theory and the change theory and the developmental theory. Okay, so sa the developmental theory, we talk about the human needs theory. So, human needs are physiologic or psychological factors that are necessary for a healthy existence. I'm sure you understand about physiological needs or what are the physiological needs. Of course, when we say physiological needs, ito yung basic needs natin like the air, the water, the food, and clothing. So, those are our physiological needs. And what about psychological needs? Of course, this includes um, attachment, so marami yan. Um, orientation and control, self-esteem enhancement, yan. Increasing pleasure and avoiding pain, those are examples of your psychological factors. And the most prominent theory to focus on human needs has been um, Abraham Maslow. So we have, no, we have the Maslow's hierarchy of human needs, which was developed in 1970. It states that all humans are born with instinctive, instinctive needs. So, human needs theory, these needs are grouped, itong needs ni uh, uh, Maslow's, are grouped into five categories and are arranged in order of importance from those essential for physical survival and to those necessary to develop a person's fullest potential. So, the Maslow's hierarchy provides a framework for recognizing and prioritizing the basic needs. So, when you do or when you are working with your client later on or in the future, you have to base, um, you have to recognize these needs, okay? People must meet lower level needs. Ano ba yung nasa lower level needs? To some degree, before they can address higher level needs. So, you have to satisfy first the lower needs before you can go up. So, ganun naman talaga. Pag gumawa ng bahay, you start muna dito sa baba. Okay, what are those needs? Ito na yung five na, <coughs> na categorized. The physiologic needs, the safety needs, the love needs, steam needs, self-actualization needs. Okay. The physiological needs are the fundamental motivating forces and provide the base for Maslow's pyramid. So, ito yung pinaka-base. So, this includes the oxygen, the food, the water, elimination, activity, rest, temperature maintenance, and sexuality are essential for the existence. So, that's according to Maslow. And on the safety needs, which is actually on the second level, Human needs to be physically safe should be free from the fear and anxiety that results from a lack of security and protection. And the third level is the love needs. So everybody needs to be loved. Okay? People need to feel that they are that they belong and are loved to avoid loneliness and isolation. To meet this need, a person must give and receive love. So, you need to give love and receive love. And the fourth one, the STEAM needs. There are two types of STEAM needs. Um, STEAM derived from others and self-STEAM. People need to know that others think well of, admire, and respect them. For the self-STEAM is a person's sense of his or her own adequacy and worth. Okay. And the last one, the self-actualization. Okay. This needs is the innate to realize fully all of one's abilities and qualities that is to maximize one's potential. So, ito yung kakayanan niya. Ito siya. Ito yung skills niya. Okay, just another uh, uh, example or the pyramid. Okay, as you can see in the pyramid, Nandito sa pinakababa yung physiological needs, which sabi nga dito includes breathing, 
um, which is your air, food, water, sex, sleep, homeostasis, exclusion. Hoy, excuse me, ha? Um, later on, sasabihin natin, hindi naman lahat ng needs niya na yan, kailangan mong isatisfy. Depende sa situation or depende sa time. Okay? Okay. Hindi forget sinabi. Ma'am, sinabi mo, ma'am, nandiyan po yung sex or sa physiological needs. Ops. Hindi nyo pa need yan. Okay? Safety. Security of the body. Of employment. Of resources. Of morality. Of family. Of health. And of property. So, yung love and belongingness, um, it includes friendship, kailangan mo rin ng group of friends, family, sexual intimacy. So, this is your boyfriend, girlfriend, yan. Steam, the self-steam, confidence, achievements, respect of others, respect by others. So, yan yung mga example. For the self-actualization, it includes your morality, creativity, spontaneity, Problem-solving skills, lack of prejudice, and acceptance of facts. Okay. Saan na tayo? So, human needs theory. A person is not motivated by all five categories of human needs at the same time. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. Not, hindi naman lahat-lahat yung nandun sa pyramids na yun ay magmumotivate ng isang tao at the same time. So, depende pa rin. The category most relevant to the person's circumstances at a particular time is the primary motivator. Kung nasaan ka. So, if you are a student, alam mo lang doon kung ano ba yung mga basic needs mo. Kung doon sa physiological needs, ang pinaka-importante sa iyo doon, tanggalin mo yung sex. Ang nandun lang is your um, food, water, Ayan, yun yung mga basic needs mo na kailangan siyang may provide at that age or at that level or at that time. Meeting needs is a, is a dynamic process that involves continual resolution of progression beyond and return to any given category needs. Okay. So, human needs are motivational forces according to Yura and Walsh, 1988. So, culture, socioeconomic factors, personal values and help influence the motivational strength for and manner of expression of these needs. They can learn to delay meeting their needs and modify the specific behaviors that satisfy needs depending on each needs motivational strength. So, if, an, if the needs goes unmet, physical illness, psychological disequilibrium, or death can occur. So, Pwede ikamatay. Siyempre, pag di mo pinakain yung tao, di ba? Di mo pinainom ng water. So, siyempre, wala siyang pagkain, wala siyang water. Of course, the person may die. Kasi hindi unmet yung needs. Okay? So, depende pa rin doon sa kanyang um, level or nasaan siya for that particular time. So, that actually um, uh, talks about our nursing our, our non-nursing theories, although that is non-nursing theories, but those theories are very relevant, very significant. And you can use those theories in in your practice later on. So, pwede mong gamitin yung mga theories na yun. You need to understand those theories. Yung developmental stages natin, actually, hindi lang kay Maslow's. There are more um, theories pa rin about that. Okay? So, this actually ends our first topic for this week and we'll move to the next one later. So, thank you.